Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Art Gallery of Southwestern Manitoba. We're live, and um, I'm Deirdre Chisholm, and I'm the executive director of the gallery. And tonight, we're opening a prairie vernacular uh, from uh, Treaty 2. And um, with that, I would like to give a, a sh very short land acknowledgement um, to honor the fact that we are on Treaty 2 territory, which is the traditional land, sh uh, shared land of the Cree, Oji Cree, Anishinaabeg, Dakota, Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. And I should also add that this is a very small contribution towards the long process ahead of us in terms of our, our recommendations for reconciliation. Tonight, we're going to be receiving greetings uh, from several guests, and we're also going to be watching a time-lapse video that's been specially prepared for you uh, that will describe how the, uh, the exhibition is put together. And we're also going to have a musical guest at the end. Um, and so with that, I would like to introduce our Mayor of Brandon, Mayor Rick Crest. Well, hello everyone, and thank you very much, uh, Deirdre. And for everyone that's uh, tuning in, thank you very much for for really uh, subscribing to the Art Gallery of Southwestern Manitoba and continuing uh, to support it. Um, when you're a, a mayor of a medium-sized city, uh, the the sort of food and drink that nourishes us is all the events and the people that we uh, that we get to engage uh, in our our daily lives uh, through our work. Uh, as a madly, the pandemic has certainly put me on a severe diet of getting to attend uh, special uh, occasions and getting to uh, to see lots of people. So I was just thrilled to death to uh, be invited uh, by the art gallery to uh, participate in um, in tonight's opening. I've attended uh, many times. Our family is uh, certainly uh, um, avid uh, have avid involvements in the uh, art gallery. My wife's been a previous board member and members of my, our family uh, really uh, do uh, attend on a regular basis, as I know so many in our community do. So I'd like to really commend uh, the Art Gallery for finding a way to just carry on. And, and to me, what has kind of warmed my heart is just seeing the resilience of the human spirit through this uh, pandemic as, as certainly unprecedented as it's been, but to see the, the ways and means that uh, people and individuals and businesses and organizations have, uh, have just figured it out to uh, be able to uh, keep going. And the art gallery is certainly no exception to be able to find this forum to uh, be able to continue to uh, share the works, uh, share art education, uh, many speakers that will be coming up ahead, uh, conversations with artists, uh, art educators, curators alike. So we're really looking forward to that. And certainly very much looking forward to uh, tonight's opening of Prairie Vernacular. And I wanna close off by uh, providing, I guess, a, a very official welcome to the Art Gallery's new curator, Lucy Later Handler. I hope I got that uh, uh, pronounced correctly, but I did get to meet her online a couple of days ago and uh, we're very much looking forward to having her here in our community and at the art gallery uh, providing her uh, talents and passion and uh, I think it's going to be just fabulous so to everyone that's tuned in thank you very much for continuing to support uh, our wonderful world-class art gallery and we very much look forward to uh, tonight's uh, opening and Deirdre thank you very much for involving me. You're very, very welcome, uh, Mayor Rick. And uh, uh, again, um, thank you for the wonderful warm greetings from Council. And uh, this is uh, a delight to behold. Um, I only wish that I could reach in my screen and share with you some of the wonderful pieces that are surrounding us tonight. Um, I am just delighted to introduce um, Lucy Letterhandler from Montreal, who's soon to be a Brandonite. And um, we're going to have many, many conversations, I know. Uh, but Lucy, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what your hopes and dreams are maybe for uh, the 
uh, future vision of the gallery. Thank you so much, Deirdre and uh, Mayor Rick. I can't tell you um, how how um, eager we are, my partner Keith and I, to to finally just be Brandonites, um, especially during this time. Where and and these warm greetings are are really gratifying. Um, we're sure that we're going to really love it there. Um, so I'm speaking to you from an empty apartment in Chochage, Montreal, which is the traditional land of the Kanyankahaka people, and as long been a meeting place for many First Nations. Um, I've been here just under 20 years. Um, I'm of mixed settler and Yiddish ancestry. Uh, my mother was born into a large Irish Catholic family in the Midwest, and my father was born in what would be called now a refugee camp in Poland. Um, he was also raised here in Chicago, Montreal. Um, and I was born in a coastal town in uh, Massachusetts. And then I was raised just outside of Washington, DC, where I took full, um, uh, I, I used the, the fullness of the world-class museums there, maybe even took them for granted a little bit, um, and then moved to Montreal in order to attend McGill University, where I got my BA in uh, art history. And then for several years, I worked uh, managing the educational programs at a performing arts center and became um, very familiar with the theater community before, um, uh, returning to get my master's in art education at Concordia University, which is my most recent credit. Um, when I started working at the Performing Arts Center, I also joined a curatorial collective called Studio Beluga, um, which had a very broad mandate, but was really focused on supporting emerging artists and emerging talent um, locally and nationally. Uh, that's also Funnily, or maybe it's not even a coincidence, where I met a former AGSM curator, Natalia Lebinskaya. Um, so I've been following the activities of the AGSM for a very long time. Um, so uh, most recently, my research, which stemmed off of my master's work about building mythologies through art and art making and identifying what are the imaginaries and histories of the land, and that was about um, a very local place in Montreal. And I've broadened that into mythologies of um, the ocean and of large spaces. Um, and, and how can we use art and art making to really figure out um, uh, the, the truth of these things? Um, I've been thinking a lot about sea monsters lately, for example, and how they obviously exist because they affect the things around them, whether or not they're a physical presence. Um, I can't believe my good fortune that this is the exhibit that I'm that I'm entering into, the exhibit that's welcoming me in, because it's um, just very much about that, and it's about this this land that's quite foreign to me. But then I think of it as this ocean and all of these imaginaries that that populate it, um, and I can't think of a better way to really familiarize myself with the with with something honest about my new home. Um, I'll, I'll leave it there and send it back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Um, we're going to have some really incredible conversations. I know it. And um, uh, we have a very special video that uh, has been prepared to help our audience uh, understand a little bit about the behind the scenes and to give a, a, a quick overview of the exhibition. So with that, I'm going to call upon Anna to uh, play the uh, our first video.
So I hope that doesn't make you too exhausted, um, but um, it's a, uh, it was a, a spectacular effort um, with our installation team. And uh, um, there's in, uh, so many thank yous that I have to make. I shouldn't be doing that now. I just wondered, Lucy, um, I know that uh, you've only been able to look at some of the images in the exhibition that are small two inch by two inch JPEGs. Are there any works that uh, stand out to you and or are there any works that are you looking forward to seeing in person? I'm obviously looking forward to seeing the videos because I haven't been able to see any of the video work. Um, and uh, it's really fun to see all of this work with human beings standing next to them because I had no sense of the scale of the, of the sculptural pieces, especially. Um, but the, the one that kept, uh, I don't know, giving me the excited feeling as I was browsing through was uh, 10 Weddings by Anne Harbus. Um, who was born in Manitoba, but spent her life in Saskatchewan. And the reason, so um, what really excites me about curating is, um, is creating a space where you can hear the whispers of all the different work as you move through a space. And with 10 Weddings in particular, I feel like it has an entire conversation happening in one piece that you can read almost like, like words on a page. Um, so it's a, it's a piece of 10 weddings in her family that took place over 40 years, occurring simultaneously. Um, and you can see this, this change from a kind of traditional um, prairies Ukrainian culture into a more modern and urbanized culture. And you can see it on the screen here. It's, um, uh, it's, it's so legible um, and, and you can hear the, the conversations happening between generations and between family members and within the community and between the agriculture and uh, and the um, the infrastructure of, of the village. Um, so I, I'm really excited to see that in person. And I believe it's about a meter. So it's quite a large piece as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I know that uh, you were really fascinated by some aspects uh, defined by the area of uh, surrealism. And um, in particular, Chris Reed's uh, lovely piece. And um, I don't know if we can, uh, if we've got a screen share of that, uh, but um, the Baba Yaga. Yes, could you yeah. could you just explain a little bit about the mythology of the Baba Yaga? So um, I, there, was, there was a recent movie that featured this as well, but it's a house that walks on chicken legs and devours children, um, <laughs> and it's uh, it's from the Urals um, in in this case specifically Ukrainian. Um, and what I love, it's, it's so funny and it's so horrific, um, but I love how you, you can really, um, this is what interests me so much about these, these imaginaries, these, these mythologies is that you can just bring them with you without taking up any room in your suitcase, you know, as you immigrate across, across the world, you bring this, this little bit of, um, of, of something that needed to be expressed, you know, and you don't have to reinvent it. You, you can just bring it really literally with you. And the fact that it's so funny, I think, makes it really engaging. Um, uh, and like sea monsters, I think that uh, whether or not she's real, she's real, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think that's, that's uh, it, it's got its own charm. Um, yeah. I also found a work in the exhibition that I thought really responded to your interest in prairie sea monsters. And um, uh, I'm hoping I can do this properly. Um, Let's. Uh, there. Yeah. Um, it's it's teeth are made of little crayon tips, and you know, like a lot of folk art, it's just made from whatever is. Uh, surrounding um, and it has this kind of charm as kind of like a mud puppy and yet it's it's got its own little bit of terror to um, add to that and um, when I saw this I thought this is this sort of responds to the prairie sea monster element that uh, you mentioned yesterday and I thought or the day before and I thought oh he's, you know it, it just kind of looks up it wants to be petted and it just seems to have uh, a life of its own as well. Yeah. And I know that we also talked a little bit about sort of the idea that, um, you know, and I noticed that in the curator talk, 
they avoid using the term outside art. And that is because they were looking for a term that was more inclusive. And that led to the title of, you know, vernacular uh, instead of trying to create um, defined areas. They wanted to focus on the art and the artists. So they stuck to the term vernacular. But also, I was really kind of pleasantly surprised that while the curators were researching this exhibition, um, the late uh, Cliff Eland from Winnipeg sent them a copy of a folk art exhibition that he did when he was in Nova Scotia that it was uh, entitled The Vernacular. And he had urged them to use the term vernacular instead of uh, trying to define it by simply folk art or um, outsider art in uh, ways that it is identified in, in uh, maybe the commercial realm. So I thought that was really kind of interesting that there was another Manitoba influence that uh, is felt through the uh, process of, of curating as well. Um, there was one image also that I, I mentioned yesterday that uh, I was particularly attracted to, um, and that was the work of Heather Benning, uh, who's in Swift Current, and that there's two video pieces, and you would not ordinarily, uh, you know, identify video art as being part of what we identify as folk art, but it does have a narrative context. And in this case, the two works that are video related in the exhibition are, are uh, related you know, quite strongly to uh, contemporary narratives, particularly Heather's work, which relates to the loss of the family farm. Um, I'm going to try and... So this image, although it's a little raw, is the image of uh, an uh, older, it was built in the 60s, and um, the artist project uh, was known as the Doll House. And the agreement that the artist had with the uh, landowners and owners of the property was that after, if the work was to become accessed or vandalized, that they would, um, they would end the project. And uh, the artist was able to negotiate with um, the property owner and also with the fire department to do a coordinated burn, which she then created a film about. And it's very rare, I mentioned this earlier, that an artist uh, in their lifetime gets to see the birth and death of an artwork. And that has taken on a whole different life form of its own. And uh, this is visible in the exhibition as well. Um, but again, it's more of a lament for the loss of the family farm. And um, it's beautiful and as uh, rough as it seems, it's, um, it has a lot of uh, memories that uh, serve the artist and serve people that are from farming stock as well. Yeah. So um, with that, um, I just wanted to maybe segue uh, to talk a little bit about some of the ways that our audience are going to be able to participate and learn more about the uh, prairie, uh, the exhibition itself, but learn about the artists and the artworks. Um, we've scheduled a series of events uh, throughout the um, the next six, six to seven weeks, um, starting tomorrow. For those of, for those that have tuned in, they can at noon. Uh, this is Central Time. You can meet the two curators, uh, Joanne Marion and uh, uh, Jen, Jennifer McCrory, uh, who will be online together in discussion about the process of putting together uh, a prairie vernacular. As well, we'll be debuting the introduction of our first video. Um, so again, I'm urging people, if you're unable, if you're not able to attend all the events, there's going to be multiple ways that uh, you can learn more about the exhibition. Um, every, almost every Thursday, there's either an artist talk or what we call the vernacular spotlights, which are highlighting some of the production in our own Westman region, uh, specific to artists and artisans that 
are uh, not necessarily uh, involved in this particular exhibition, but whose uh, artwork and practice uh, mirror some of the themes uh, and ideas that are exposed in this uh, and in a prairie vernacular. So I urge people to tune in. Um, there's a schedule that's listed on the art gallery's website. Um, as well, we don't want to uh, lose our family memberships and there's an opportunity for you to do an online workshop March 11th and details will be released. Uh, and uh, there will also be materials made available to people so that they can, uh, they can participate live as well. And uh, let's see, tomorrow, uh, I mentioned that there's the curator talk, but I, uh, I almost forgot. That, and I need to say that a huge thank you to a restaurant in town, The Dock, for providing lunch. If you haven't ordered your lunch, you might have to rush down to The Dock and purchase it and sit and watch live as the talk unfolds. But again, thank you for your participation as well. And uh, let's see, ah, every Tuesday, um, this is a very complicated exhibition in the sense that there's multiple themes, so for a hundred works. So you'll want to dial in every Tuesday to catch a segment uh, about the themes and to learn more about the individual artists and uh, artworks again. So these have been uh, specially produced as part of the series uh, so that uh, people can enjoy from their homes or enjoy in the classroom uh, or um, enjoy in the, you know, in some manner that uh, they can participate and see and learn more about something that is really and truly um, unique to uh, prairie lifestyle. Um, again, and I forgot to do this at the beginning, there is an opportunity for you to ask questions and you're welcome to pose questions to Lucy uh, or myself um, about the exhibition or about aspects of what we're doing. Uh, I, I can't uh, thank people enough for your patience, uh, especially as we've gone through some turbulent times. And I will not look into my crystal ball and predict when uh, we'll be open physically to the public because we want to uh, keep each other uh, as safe as possible. And we also want to keep the message positive that uh, there will be a uh, there will be a return to the gallery but at uh, at this time I think it would it's just not possible to say when but uh, I'm going to give you as many opportunities to feel uh, the sensations of art and the opportunity to make art and the op opportunity to share that uh, with each other and with us uh, through this process so again um, I, I'd like to direct your attention to the AGSM's website. Uh, there are, um, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and we're on Twitter. And uh, very often, multiple times a day, messages are, are circulated to help you uh, connect. And if you feel like you have wanted to see something, you missed it, um, you had to make a cheese sandwich, uh, that there's, you know, the, a lot of these recordings will be uh, probably stockpiled uh, in our Facebook, and it's certainly the educational videos will be available on our website. So, again, uh, don't, uh, th th this is the beauty of, of being live and, and technology, that if, for instance, you forgot something, there's probably an opportunity to return to it. So, Again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to your feedback. Um, and if there are uh, any questions about the exhibition, no, I think I have oh. Oh, okay. And this is to Derek Morley. Um, the, the exhibition originated in Moose Jaw, and it was the collaboration of the two curators, uh, Jennifer McCrory and uh, Joanne Marion. And I think, um, the, I think the, the research 
probably started two or three years ago. And it was building on, I think, the previous work of Nancy Toosley, who's located, she's a, a retired curator, but I do believe she's active. Uh, and she had put together an exhibition about uh, folk art in particular. I remember seeing it when I was in Ontario at the McMichael. And uh, it was, you know, there was, there were segments from all across Canada that included uh, Quebec and Nova Scotia as well. So very comprehensive exhibition. So um, I think they uh, recognized that, particularly in Saskatchewan, where uh, there are many artists like Joe Fafard, Vic Sikansky, David Thauberger, who have, um, you know, their own practice has evolved from uh, working and it's been inspired by the folk art in uh, their regions. So, you know, there's, again, I guess there's a certain assessment uh, that's taken place. And I think they found uh, that the curators have seen that, you know, there's a huge growth in the collections, the public collections in various institutions uh, across the prairies as well. So, you know, I take no credit for this uh, exhibition. I all the, you know, I love folk art. I've had the opportunity to work with collectors in Ontario. And I have to say that, you know, it puts a smile on my face uh, to think about the, the fun times that I've had and um, the accessibility that uh, folk art uh, brings uh, into our, our lives. And I call it folk art, but I mean, you know, contemporary narratives are um, complicated and, you know, the expressions are varied. So, um, but thank you for your question, Derek. And with that, I don't see any more questions, but I do thank you again for tuning in and I have a, a, you know, kind of a little bit of a surprise, but, you know, Brandon is a very musical uh, city, uh, Lucy, and you're going to probably uh, enjoy living in uh, this area. And I have a young guest with us tonight. Uh, she is a fiddler. She's a university student, and uh, her name is Caitlin Baker. And I'm going to... Uh, uh, you know, invite her to perform. So with that, uh, I'd like to say good evening and thank you very much for tuning in. <laughs>